Now you know that protons are important because they're the part of the nucleus of an atom that gives the atom its identity. Doesn't matter how many neutrons or electrons there are, the number of protons makes every kind of atom of every kind of element what it is. For example, sodium is a shiny silvery metal that conducts electricity and is extremely explosive when it comes in contact with water. Now I'm not talking about what you read on the nutrition facts of food. It says sodium. That's probably sodium chloride, which is a completely different substance. I'm talking about pure sodium metal. Pure sodium metal is made up of atoms that have 11 protons. If the atoms have 12 protons, it becomes a completely different metal. But think about this. If those sodium atoms with 11 protons lose just one of their protons, it's not a shiny silvery explosive metal anymore. The substance becomes a gas that doesn't really react with anything. You couldn't get neon, which has 10 protons in its nucleus. You can't get neon to explode. Neon is colorless. You can't even see it. And when you run electric current through it, it makes a bright, beautiful red color that we're used to seeing in neon signs. So just one proton can make a substance extremely reactive and explosive and a metal or extremely stable and unreactive and a gas. The number of protons is really important. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at another particle that's in the nucleus. The only other particle in the nucleus, the neutron. And we're going to look at what a neutron does for an atom. Now, in some ways, it's nowhere near as important as what the protons do. Neutrons do not determine the type of atom that you're dealing with. However, they do serve a very important function in atoms that not many people are aware of. Let's take a look at the neutrons in an atom by again looking at a sample atom. And we're going to take another look at a carbon atom. Remember, this is one of the two atoms that's the most common in living things here on Earth. So this carbon atom is made up of smaller pieces inside. And again, we'll take a look inside. This is what a carbon atom looks like. And it's made up of an electron cloud. We'll look at the electrons later. And then that dense center part, the nucleus. In the nucleus, you have protons, which we've already talked about. But you also have these particles known as neutrons. Now, neutrons have certain characteristics and functions just like the protons do. Just like protons were located in the nucleus, neutrons are located in the nucleus. However, unlike protons, which remember, protons had a positive one plus charge. They attracted electrons. Neutrons get their name from being neutral because they actually don't have any charge at all. Protons have no charge just mass. They have a mass of one atomic mass unit, just like protons do. That's why that nucleus is so dense and massive, but they actually don't have any charge. The purpose or function of a neutron in an atom, they give the nucleus stability. They make sure that the nucleus is stable so it doesn't decay and break apart so this atom changes into different atoms. Neutrons stabilize the nucleus of an atom. Another way to think about it is atoms that are radioactive are radioactive and they'll break apart because they have an imbalance of neutrons. And that can be a very useful thing too. All right, so we learned that in the previous lesson there were characteristics and functions of protons. We also learned what happens when you change the number of protons in an atom. What happens if you change the number of neutrons? Well, let's just take a look at this whole atom again. This atom has a total mass in its nucleus of 12 different particles. There are six protons, each with a mass of one, and six neutrons, each with a mass of one. We would call this atom of carbon carbon 12 because there's 12 particles. I'm going to add two more neutrons to this to change it to something else. So when I add two more neutrons to the nucleus, I actually give it a mass of 14 different particles in the nucleus. So I'm going to call it carbon 14. Now this is a slightly different substance than carbon 12 is. In fact, let's bring in a carbon 12 atom just so we can compare the two. Hmm, these atoms look exactly the same. They're really not much different from one another. And that's the point. 
neutrons don't really change the atom to anything different. They don't really alter the atom and make it a completely different substance. Carbon-14 looks exactly the same as carbon-12 does from the outside. The only difference, carbon-14 is just a little heavier. It's got two extra neutrons in it compared to carbon-12. And here's what that causes to happen. Carbon-12 is completely stable. It has a balance of protons and neutrons in the nucleus that make it a substance that's not going to break apart. Whereas carbon-14 has too many neutrons. It doesn't have a stable nucleus, and carbon-14 will break down over time. It is radioactive. And that's what happens when you change the number of neutrons. You change the atom to something called a different isotope. Isotopes are two atoms that have the exact same number of protons. They're the exact same atom. If you looked at carbon-14 and carbon-12, from the outside, most likely they would both be black powdery substances like charcoal. They would look exactly the same as one another. The difference isn't in their appearance or their properties, it's just in their mass and their tendency to break apart to become different substances. Carbon-14 is heavier and it will break apart over time because it's radioactive. Carbon-12 is perfectly stable. One more thing. Don't get the mistaken idea that the nuclei of atoms are only balanced if they have the same number of protons and neutrons. That's the case for carbon, which if it has six protons and six neutrons is completely stable. But there are some atoms that are stable if they have a completely different number of protons and neutrons, especially when you get down lower on the periodic table. As you get farther down the periodic table, it takes more neutrons to make a certain number of protons balance with each other. So that's the story on neutrons. Neutrons are found in the nucleus. They have no charge. They are neutral. But they do have mass. And when you change the number of neutrons, you change the substance to a different isotope of the same substance. For example, if you have two atoms of carbon and one has six neutrons and one has eight neutrons. They're the same substance. It's just the one with eight neutrons is heavier and radioactive, and the one with six is lighter and stable.